the magic of Mexico, in the footsteps of the Toltecs and Carlos Castaneda. Here, under the Pyramid of the Moon, the same thing. There is a cave, but most likely, it was close to the public. We hastily, within 40 minutes, approximately along the Avenue of the Dead, we need to return to the beginning of the road to the Temple of Coatzacoatl. Behind the temple platforms and pyramids that line the main avenue, there were buildings that archaeologists consider to be residential buildings. The fact is that stoves and partitions for rooms were found inside such buildings. On average, there were about 30 rooms in such buildings but real palaces with 175 rooms are also known. Such huge communal apartments had perfect plumbing and sewerage systems, as well as prayer meeting halls. The Day the Gods Came, 2003, Eric von Deniken. Irina talks about this in more detail. Some of the assistants to the leaders, the top, probably lived here. These little enclosed rooms. All rooms were connected by one large hall. On the other side was the entrance. Before this wall, there was one house. After this wall, another house. There's a hole in the corner over there. It was a toilet. The drainage system was developed. After visiting the toilet, they flushed everything with water so that everything was carried away. They also had a shower there. They poured water over this. They also had a shower they also had a shower there they poured water over themselves and all the water was carried away through the channels before there were no doors doorways were closed with woven cane rugs people respected each other if such a rug was pubescent then there were people inside and before entering the house they asked permission to enter There are many reasons to assert that Teotihuacan is a unique, grandiose space model made in stone, which is a symbolic image of our solar system. Continuing the search of the smallest measure of length that would appear in the proportions of the small buildings of Teotihuacan, the engineer Harleston found such a unit. As it turned out, it was 1.059 meters. The Maya called this value Hunab which in fact means unit of length. So the key to the proportions of the urban plan was found. It turns out that all distances and proportions in Teotihuacan are multiples of the Hunab. All measurements made by the researcher fit exactly into a certain number of Hunab. In order to see better, it is often enough to change the direction of the gaze. Wrote Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, 1900-1944. Thanks to this unit, Harleston was able to look at the skyline of the city with new eyes. The height of the pyramids of Quetzalcoatl, 
the sun and the moon is respectively 21, 42, and 63 quinups. That is, these values are in proportion 1, 2, 3 relative to each other. The heights of the steps of the Pyramid of the Sun is a multiple of 3 Hunab. The Day the Gods Came, 2003, Eric von Denneken. Scramble. <laughs> Hooray! There are five steps left. Last march. The third largest building in Teotihuacan is the so-called citadel with the temple of Quetzalcoatl. The ornamental motifs of the frescoes in the temple of Quetzalcoatl testify that the symbol of the flying god in the form of the feathered serpent was known in the regions of Central America long before the arrival of the Mayans and the Aztecs. This motif is almost identical to the later images of the real god Quetzalcoatl among the Aztecs, who was known to the Maya under the name Kukulkan. But the original real Quetzalcoatl was known to the inhabitants of ancient Teotihuacan. The Day the Gods Came, 2003, Eric von Denneken. Ask, were there sacrifices here? Not. Why do I feel like it? Human sacrifice is an invention of the Spaniards. What kind of animal is this? Where? Maybe it's a groundhog? Mermot, Mermot. Vaughn is sitting. I see, gray with a ponytail. Or a squirrel? They are gray here. We return to the topic of discussion. Sacrifices were an invention of the Spaniards to turn the Indians away from their age-old faith and convert them to Christianity. The art and mythology of Teotihuacan, reflecting the rich spiritual world of their creators, was concentrated around the pantheon of deities. The most important place in mythology was occupied by Quetzalcoatl, the god with the body of a snake covered with bird feathers. The inhabitants of the city worshipped him as the supreme deity of nature. According to the ideas and beliefs of the Toltecs, everything in this world is dual. That is, everything that has a physical material form has an energy double. Zakotl implements the principle of balance of this duality. That is, in the feathered serpent, Quetzalcoatl, both ascending and descending flows are equally manifested, both flying and creeping, both a bird and a snake, both an energy and a physical material body. During the life of a man of the times of Teotihuacan, it was very important to develop both one body and another. Tlaloc and Quetzalcoatl are the two most important deities. Tlaloc represents all the waters that pour down on us from the sky. Without rain, there is no harvest. 
and Quetzalcoatl represents wisdom. Here in this place, one seeks the wisdom of the head and the wisdom of the heart, the wisdom of the mind and the wisdom of feeling. Previously, it was impossible to get very rich because there was no money. Everything was in exchange. That is, I will give you the corn that I have grown, and you will give me the clothes that you have made. I'll give you cocoa. I'll give you, let's say, a tree that you cut down. Today, some archaeologists are officially of the opinion that perhaps Teotihuacan in ancient times was a city dedicated to the god of rain and abundance, Tlaloc, because its quarters are literally cut through by a network of water canals. The age of the statue of the god Tlaloc, which was discovered in the village of Kotlichan, lost among the rocks about 20 kilometers from Teotihuacan, exceeds 2,000 years. Today, this strange mustard yellow monster is one of the guards guarding the National Anthropological Museum in Mexico City. The day the gods came, 2003, Eric von Daniken. Images of Tlaloc and Quetzalcoatl alternate on the walls of the Temple of Quetzalcoatl in Teotihuacan. like rain. Tlaloc and Quetzalcoatl are the two most important deities. Tlaloc represents all the waters that pour down on us from the sky. Without rain, there is no harvest. And Quetzalcoatl represents wisdom. That is, abundance with wisdom. When it was not possible to get rich, what was left for people? Look for wisdom within yourself. Have your face in your heart. Look for Quetzalcoatl in yourself. Thank Tlaloc for the rain that he sends to the earth, and the earth that gives a harvest for food. Pope Alexander VI Borgia in the 1490s, when Columbus discovered the Dominican Republic, issues a decree to baptize all the people they found there. But finding there the cannibal people, who used the meat of people for food, he ordered them to be killed. It was beneficial for the Spaniards to say that these Indians kill people for the good of their gods. Boil beans with their meat, eat this for holidays, so we will destroy them. There were human sacrifices, but they were made at the personal choice of a person. For example, if there was no rain for three years, then they asked who was to sacrifice himself to the rain god Lalak. The one who was called was sacrificed, and he immediately fell into the world of Tlaloc, into Tlalakan, into paradise. During the wars, captured soldiers were not killed. They were sorted by families. They worked for four years. After four years, these people became free again and could go wherever they wanted. New York is the Big Apple, right? That is, a big anthill, right? If a prisoner wanted to marry a daughter, a neighbor, or someone else, he could marry and stay on this land, or go to big cities like Big Ant Hills and other lands.
about 650 AD, Teotihuacan was at the height of its prosperity. But then, some inexplicable catastrophe came, and the inhabitants left the city. The reasons for this remain unknown. The mystery of Teotihuacan has yet to be unraveled. It is natural to assume that after the destruction of the city and the departure of the invaders, the inhabitants and priests would have returned to their capital and rebuilt it. Indeed, it is known that construction work in Teotihuacan was carried out after 650 until about 800 AD. The city does not disappear from the historical scene. The Day the Gods Came, 2003, Eric von Däniken. There are two versions of what happened to the inhabitants of this city. The first version, no matter how fantastic it may seem, says that the death of the city occurred at the time of the disappearance of the sun, apparently as a result of the explosion of planet X, or at least a huge planetoid in orbits between Mars and Jupiter, where the asteroid belt is now located. The second version says that for some reason, all the inhabitants of the city at about the same time passed into the second attention and moved into the Nagual reality. Don Juan also speaks about this in the books of Carlos Castaneda. The second version can complement, not contradict the first version. Merchants in Teotihuacan sometimes had the finest products made of volcanic glass, obsidian. This mineral was highly valued in ancient America and was used primarily by priests and shamans in their practices. The group was given the task of each buying an obsidian mirror, with which Toltec practices should be shown during bus rides. Some members of the group bought not only obsidian mirrors, but also obsidian ritual axes. Tiana, turn around, smile. These are obsidian daggers, but they look like staffs. Ask how much such one costs. There is someone here to ask. What is this for? This is Kozakotl. This is Tonadzin. This is the eagle warrior. How can it be used? As a home decoration. Not for rituals? Can. Can be used in rituals. Before entering Teotihuacan, Grandfather Miguel for some reason voiced a banal version, which was hard to believe, that when the city fell into decay, its inhabitants broke into groups and went in search of new lands. At the exit from Teotihuacan, Grandfather Miguel admitted that this city was the center of dreams and its inhabitants could move to other worlds. It remains an acceptable version that in a moment of danger, the inhabitants of the city burned out from the inside, leaving this world, and in their dream bodies as an avatars moved to another reality. And what archaeologists who studied at universities from books written by Europeans cannot understand is that the ancient peoples of Mesoamerica adhered to the understanding that the earth does not belong to us, but we belong to the earth. We are not the masters of the earth. To experience the decline of your culture is very sad. In sadness, it plunges you into depression. To avoid all this, the people of the city in Teotihuacan were divided into groups, divided into groups and dispersed to new lands. What is important is that this city was an astronomical observatory and a replica of the universe. According to Castaneda, Teotihuacan was the city of ancient magicians. He reports that along the entire length of the Street of the Dead, in small niches, there were dreamers who had to fix the Pyramid of the Moon, which is at the end of the street, in the attention of the dream. At a signal, they began to contemplate the pyramid intently in order to save it for dreaming from different angles of view. In intense contemplation together, some burned up for in the fire from the inside, and only some parts of the body remained. And out of reverence, they were left there, 
because they considered that they were imbued with an unusual power. Other dreamers immediately took the place of the departed. Their goal was to jointly dream of a pyramid in another place and keep it there for several decades, and maybe for a longer time. The specific city of Teotihuacan and its structures were only some kind of project for them. In fact, it was a dream version of the city. They immortalized the picture, and the population of entire cities disappeared here, as in other places. For example, in the Yucatan, between 800 BC and 800 AD, or even later, having gone to other worlds, to their dream cities. Carlos Castaneda, the acting theater of magic, Klasa Norbert. Brief Summary of Teotihuacan Teotihuacan became a regional center in the 2nd century AD. For inexplicable reasons, this densely populated city was completely abandoned by the population by the middle of the 7th century. Teotihuacan was one of the dreaming centers of ancient Mesoamerica, and the inhabitants were practicing dreamers developing their dream bodies. Given the evidence that there were giant statues on top of the pyramids in Teotihuacan, it is most likely that these are not statues of the rain god Tlaloc, but gigantic Chakmuli, statues of warriors engaged in recapitulation in poses with obsidian mirrors on their stomachs. One of the versions that the city was empty is the result of the explosion of planetoid X in orbits between Mars and Jupiter. According to another version, at some point, all the inhabitants of the city moved to a parallel world to the Nagual. No wonder this place is translated as the place where they become gods. The second version may well complement the first. Under the Pyramid of the Sun and Teotihuacan are two huge pipes filled with mica. Mica is not mined in Mexico, so it had to be transported to Teotihuacan. For all its flexibility and plasticity, Mica is able to withstand temperatures up to 800 degrees Celsius. At the same time, it does not react in any way to sudden changes in temperature, extremely resistant to organic solvents and acids. In short, mica is an excellent natural electrical ins insulator. Obviously, under the thermal protective mica screen under the Pyramid of the Sun, there was an ancient source and producer of energy. Teotihuacan has a very clear layout. The two main pyramids are the Pyramid of the Sun, which personifies the Tonal and the Tonal world, and the Pyramid of the Moon is a guide to the unmanifested world of the Nagual. Complementing the triad is the Pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, the power or deity who is in balance between these two worlds. The orientation of objects in Teotihuacan in space with a deviation of 15.25 degrees from the north-south axis to the east is the direction to the star Dupi in the constellation Ursa Major, which the ancient Mesoamericans associated with Tezcatlipoca, the power of the north, which is carried on earth by obsidian, is the who is the guide to the unmanifested world of the Nagual. In the next episodes. Él es el fuego, porque están las chicoas, las serpientes del fuego. Él es el agua, porque él es, se manifiesta como claro.
See video description.